giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now, FTC is produced in partnership with the Orange Alliance. Now FTC is a platform to keep up to date on live and archive first tech challenge events and team stats at theorangealliance.org. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our first FTC Top 25 show of 2020. Tonight, we have generated a list of what you guys think are the top 25 teams in FTC Skystone so far. Uh, we will be discussing these teams as well as showing matches of the top 25. Uh, and guess who's back? If you guessed it was me, you are correct. Uh, reporting for First Updates Now FTC, I am Nathan. I'm a boss, and I'm Ishan. All right, let's get started. In the 25th spot, we have Team 14657. That's the Robo Warriors from Troy, Michigan. The Robo Warriors recently competed at the Michigan State Championship in Warren in the Woody Flowers Division and were the winning alliance captain. Overall, in my opinion, Robo Warriors seems to be a very good stacking bot, having all the components of a competitive world's bot. By that, I mean a super quick parking method with their tape measure, a very efficient capstone as they carried it around the whole time, and they placed it right at the end, as well as uh, all being accompanied by a fast stacking system. Yep. Moving on to the 24th spot, we have Team 10538. That's the Team Kilts from Howell, Michigan. Team Kilts competed in the Franklin Division at the Battle Creek Michigan State Championship, and they were the finalist alliance captain of the Franklin Division. Overall, Team Kilts was a very quick stacking bot with two with a two Skystone auto. Again, in this match, we see how synced they are with their partner, Chaos, shooting out their tape measure mechanism to park quickly. One thing I did want to point out during this match was how Kilts and Chaos decided to stack together instead of robot feeder and one robot stack. While this did work out really well initially with some beautifully synced cycles, right around when the game clock hits 90 seconds, we can see that they have some issues and they're wasting time. This is one of the reasons why I think teams will lean towards having a stacker bot and one feeder bot, but we're going to have to see what happens at the World Championship. In the 23rd spot, we have Team 8610. That's, that's Tobertech Tober from Lake Oswego, Oregon. <laughs> uh, Tobertech was part of the winning alliance with Team 12599 Overcharge at the Portland Metro League Championship this past weekend. Here's their highest scoring match today at 115 points. As we can see from this match, 8610 is our first feeder bot of the night, and I think they really show the power of having an incredibly fast intake and the other bot just stacking. One thing to note is that they are running a swerve drive, something that isn't too popular in FTC, uh, but they seem to pull it off very well. While their uh, outranking didn't, did seem a little like launching to me, uh, if the refs don't call it, sorry, while their outtaking did seem a little like launching to me, if the refs didn't call it, um, then that's what it is. Good for them. In the 22nd spot, we have Team 7244. That's Team Out of the Box from Thorndale, Pennsylvania. Tonight, we have a video of Team Out of the Box playing with Informal Logic 9872 in mid-December. One thing really important to take notice of this from the match is the risks a team has to take when using their intake and auto. While it may have a larger margin of error than a claw, uh, giving you more room for mistakes, an intake can very easily get a team 20 to 40 penalty points for taking in another stone during auto, just like Out of the Box did here. Besides that little slip-up, we can see that 7244 Out of the Box is another bot with a really solid intake to pass through and a virtual four bar like many other top teams i'm sure they'll be scoring a lot of points come later yep and now moving on to the 21st spot we have team 9889 that's cruise control from flanders new jersey much like other bots that we've seen tonight they feature a very solid intake fast list lift and precise scoring system moreover they have a very nice looking robot one of the things that all teams should take a note from this match come when stacking it can be very it's very easy to knock over your tower, especially when you have a 10 stack like Cruise Control did here. Besides their slip up at the end, we can see how efficient they are at stacking, and it definitely is a top 25 bot. 
One of the things that I want to point out is we got this video through our Discord. So if you have videos to send us, make sure to send them through our Discord and we'll be able to include them in the show. Just, uh, just a word of warning, please make sure your videos are not private so we can actually view them. Yep. And so coming in at the 20th spot, we have Team 9872. That's Informal Logic from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So Team 9872 was the finalist alliance first pick at the Christianburg Qualifier, something that's not very easy to do with all of the top-notch teams that compete there. When I first saw their robot in December, I remember being shocked about how complicated it looked, and watching their auto every time left me at the edge of my seat. Uh, as you can see here, uh, 9872 is a really quick feeder bot uh, who is not afraid to play a little defense during their matches. Uh, something that will be crucial this year at the World Championship. It should be interesting to see how their robot develops over the season, whether or not, and whether or not they can keep the same design. All right, in the 19th spot, we have Team 12635. That's Curiosity Robotics from Palo Alto, California. Curiosity Robotics most recently competed at the NorCal FTC Google Qualifying Tournament and went undefeated, ending the night in first place. Again, they're an extremely quick stacking bot that has some solid driving. One thing I noticed was how they flipped the stones out after extending outside of the robot in order to stack basically in the center of the foundation. Uh, this is something Miss Ingrid talked to us about last stream uh, for the South recap about how teams tend to stack like uh, one over and more towards the center, maybe to align or maybe for for some other reasons. Um, this isn't something we've seen a lot of teams do, but it should be interesting to see if uh, others follow suit. Uh, another thing I noticed was right at the end of their match, they uh, throw in a little victory spin. It's always fun to see teams do that on the field, but don't forget to park. It is a lot. It is those, just those five extra points, but they can decide matches. Yeah, and one of the reasons why I saw in chat that people were sacking in the center was because the studs are a little bit more stable there. Uh, I know my team does it, and a lot of teams are starting to do that because when you go to a 10, 10 high tower, 11 high tower, you don't want to have a foundation that's uh, pretty wobbly. All right, mm -hmm. now in the 18th spot, we have our first international team, 14270. And that's Quantum Robotics from Bucharest, Romania. Here's one of their videos from the St. Petersburg Qualifier in Russia. And one thing that I've noticed is in the past three years, they've always had an amazingly designed robot. And like every year they've got custom parts, 3D printed parts, and this year is no exception. They're a super fast stacking robot that was able to go eight high in late December. They ended up being the finalist alliance at this qualifier, but they won the Inspire Award advancing them to the uh, Russian uh, National Championship. Uh, one thing that I do want to note is a lot of Romanian teams like to go out of their country because of the limited number of advancement slots in Romania. So I know uh, Romanian teams are going to Russia, they're going to Korea, and they're going to other places around the world. Wow, uh, uh, Korea? Yep, Korea, yeah. FTC. Wow. It's a big thing. Do, yeah. do any of the teams go to compete in India? I don't. I think India's closed border. Yeah, closed like border. Some, some nations are open border, some nations are closed border, so... Yeah, it makes sense. And uh, rounding out the 17th spot, we have Team 14433. That's Team Yoda from Bellevue, Washington. Team Yoda has been doing very well this year, and they have also hosted a scrimmage with some top-notch teams, including 8802 Negative Resistance. Uh, in this match, we can see them being a very efficient stacking robot. Uh, one thing that I found super interesting was how they only have one set of slides for their lift instead of two. Most teams that we've seen this year are running two parallel sets of sliders in order to have a ton of support and stability when they go high in stacking. Uh, it should be interesting to see if they change their strategy and decide to add another set as the season progresses. All right. In the 16th spot, we have Team 6433. That's the Neutrinos from Gibson, Gibson, Gibson Tin, Florida. Neutrinos has always been a top team, being the winning Lions captain at the St. Louis World Championship for Cascade Effect in 2015. This year, Neutrinos, while not having an intake, have been a very efficient stacking bot, and even though they only have a claw on the front of their robot, paired with their fast lift and good driving, they're able to stack 7-9 to nine almost every match. They have another meet this weekend, so hopefully we'll see some great stuff from them there. And so, Apos, you've seen them in competition. Do you see them mm -hmm. more as a stacker, as a... Are they more of a feeder? Um, I think they go, I'm sure they'll make the Florida State Championship. And I think going into that, I think I do see them as a stacker. I mean, like uh, with just the discussions I've had with them, they are uh, they do have a lift that can go like 10 to 12 high now. And with a really quick uh, feeder bot, I definitely think they will be able to hit those caps and set really high scores. That's awesome. 
All right, mm-hmm. now we're going to move on to the 15th spot, which is Team 8719. And that's Quantum Leap from Mason, Ohio. From what I've heard in the FTC community, 8719 has some insane stuff with odometry, and I really hope we see some super high auto scores from them later in the season. In this match, this past weekend, we can see um, from the little from the little we can see of the robot, I can definitely tell that their intake is super fast and they have a pretty good lift system. One thing to notice is how they also hold their capstone with them the whole match, something that I think we'll see more teams do as the season progresses. And I personally played with Quantum Leap um, in December, and the, to see the improvement that they went through between December and this past competition in January, it's been insane. And I can see them totally like hitting the four stone auto uh, and getting stacks high up to 10 to 12 high. Yeah. Uh, what, were you going to say something? No, that's okay. Uh, as I say, in the uh, 14th spot, we have team 8221. That's Cubics from Hampstead, Maryland. Uh, they played at the Charleston. Charlesville qualifier and the Annapolis qualifier. As we can see from the video, they're, they're an efficient stacking robot with a pretty good intake. Uh, one thing I noticed in this video was how at the beginning of Teleop, their partner delivered them a stone that was flipped up. I'm not sure how many teams plan on having an intake or mechanism that can correct stones, but for now, I would warn teams against that and suggest that they, uh, that they try and deliver only upright stones. Yeah, and again, I played I played with these guys actually this past weekend. Uh, a lot of fun to play with. They're super reliable at stacking. Uh, they're able to stack 8 to 10 high consistently. And so their OPR is out of the world. Um, and all they need is a quick feeder in order to set world records. So they're, they're getting really good. I think they set a high score of 115 points. Wow. Wow. All right, in 13th spot, we have Team 13917. That's Hillside Robotics from Kalamazoo, Michigan. They were a semifinalist at the Michigan State Championship and pulled out an impressive OPR of 69.3. Some bad luck caused them to lose in the finals, but they have a solid lift and intake mechanism. One thing that they've been doing throughout the season is documenting the robot through videos on YouTube. It's been cool to see their iteration and the problems that they've encountered. And uh, this is something I would encourage uh, more teams to do in the FTC community. And like by documenting your robots and the progress you've taken through the season, like you're really just spreading uh, first in FTC to these new rookie teams, showing them how much can be done and like how to tackle problems. Guys, I just want to say how cool it is once again that these are middle school teams in Michigan. Uh, they're absolutely kicking butt. Like that, that's pretty incredible to see how awesome uh, these teams are. One ranking, obviously, here in the FTC top twenty-five, uh, and then just performing overall. I mean, it, it'd be so cool to see. Uh, if one of these teams can make a deep run at championships and they get a middle school team there as well, maybe make some of you uh, high school teams a little envious of them. Yeah, I know. So a lot of times what has happened in the past at championship with Michigan teams is they don't work on the robots after December because the state championship's over by them and the game evolves. But this year, I'm really hoping that we see some good Michigan teams pull out and make a run at champs. Yeah, no, I'll, yeah, I'll just definitely. jump in and say what you said about that, Ishan, is really the biggest reason why we don't see a lot of Michigan teams uh, going all the way in championship. It's because they lose really a lot of their support, time, and focus to all the FRC teams in Michigan. Um, It's kind of sad that that happens, but also Michigan is so intense that they have some the most FRC teams in the world. I think, I assume the most FTC teams out of any state. Um, So it's really, it's it's a massive program down here. I'm in Michigan now, so uh, I've really noticed that teams kind of have a semester and that's all they really get. Uh, which is kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's also built into the school system, which allows a lot more teams to compete. Yeah, definitely. All right. In the 12th spot, we have another international team. That's team 3954. And that's Pink to the Future. I apologize because I'm going to butcher this name, but it's from Den Haag, Netherlands. Is that correct? I don't know. Yep. Pink to the Future has been around forever. Like, I can't remember going to a championship without them there. Uh, they've done some pretty cool things with their robot, and even though they can't stack higher than two stones high, they have a very high OPR of 73 due to their uh, effectiveness in cycling and their effectiveness in auto. Uh, one of the cool things that they did this year was they cast molded their own wheels using custom silicone so that they could make custom size wheels for their intake and they could make them pink. Uh, overall, always a beautiful robot, always an awesome team to interact with. If you ever get the chance to go to Detroit Worlds, uh, make sure to go talk to them. Uh, super cool people. 
Yeah, and I know every year, or at least this year, they made a robot in one week video. I think it's really awesome when teams do that. Just showing that in the FTC community really does help a lot of teams. Oh, that's real. I didn't know they did that. That's really cool. And you got to love their pink suits that they rock a chance. Yeah. <laughs> Always a great sight to see. <laughs> uh, rounding out the 11th spot, we have team 12611. That's Technova from Bellevue, Washington. Uh, this team's auto is just incredible. Uh, they consistently get four stones and have one of the best designed odometry systems in FTC. Uh, they are constantly releasing their new auto paths, and it looks like they should be able to hit five or six stones in the auto by the end of the season. Uh, I mean, before I finish, I'll say, do you think gluten free is also going to hit this mark, or do you think um, Technova is really? Think so. Or do you think Technova is overtaking them on the auto front? I don't know. Well, gluten free is no, not open I... about it. Technova has been very open about what they're doing. So even if Gluten Free is able to hit the five or six, um, Technova has been the one that's sharing it and trying to improve the FTC community. So who knows? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, and on top of their amazing auto, um, Technova has got a really incredible feeder um, that can build skyscrapers and traverse the field really quickly. So I'm really looking forward to see what they're going to be able to do next this season. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I remember correctly, I think Gluten Free does have a meet this weekend, so it should be interesting to see if we see any super high auto scores. Um, and now on to the 10th spot. Starting off the top 10, we have Team 5064. That's Aperture Science from Elon, North Carolina. Aperture Science played this past weekend at the Northern Guilford Qualifier, where they took home both the Design Award and Winning Alliance Captain. They collect stones using a grabbing mechanism that holds the stones on the side and on the top, and then they deliver the stones using a very quick and tall dual scissor lift that appears to be able to stack eight, maybe even nine, st nine stones high. They've booked their ticket to the North Carolina, so let's see how they do there in a month. Yeah, and I think this design super interesting. We've seen a lot of teams go with linear slides, but out of these top 10, there's a couple of teams that actually use the scissor lift mechanism. Mm -hmm. And I think it's cool to see how FTC, especially in this game, has allowed for innovation. Um, that's something that we haven't necessarily gotten in the past with the dump truck meta in Relic Recovery and the diagonal slides meta in... Um, Rover Ruckus. So it, it's cool that we can see teams that are not using the meta uh, and creating awesome robots. Well, we can um, see them right here as they go to stack. Their scissor lift seems to be super smooth, super awesome, which I really like to see. I know, as you were saying, we don't see a whole lot of scissor lifts around uh, nowadays. It's yeah, just, and it, especially it's with the scissor watch. Yeah. You can increase the amount of stages very easily. So I can totally see them being able to stack 13, 15 high uh, by the end of the season. That's going to be pretty crazy. Yeah. All right, in the ninth spot, we've got Team 12599. And that's Overcharged from Portland, Oregon. Overcharged is 9, 1, and 1, and has a very successful has had a very successful run at the Portland Metro League Championship this past weekend, taking home the Think Award and was on the winning alliance. They have double compliant wheel intakes to collect stones during the driver control mode, but they also have an arm that extends outside of the robot that they use during Auditon to grab the capstone, uh, to grab the sky stones and deliver them to the foundation. Their drivetrain appears to be using a tank drive, and they use a double extension lift to deliver stones to the foundation. Their highest score, their their highest OPR this season is 71.3, and they currently hold the eighth highest score in the world. Mm. It, uh, I mean, Overcharge always has been a very successful team. I know last year they had that little popper mechanism to score, and I'm sure like we'll see some really great designs from them this year as well. Well, I, I was going to point out one thing I saw that was interesting. Uh, Overcharge and their sister team, Revamped, were both put into mm -hmm. different leagues this year. <laughs> right. So they both attended different championships, so I thought it was a very interesting mm -hmm. move and strategy. I don't know if they chose to do that or if Oregon chose that. <laughs> um, yeah. It'll be uh, interesting to see them together. Yeah, it definitely will be. Maybe we'll see them together at States. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so in the eighth spot, we have Team uh, 8393. That's the Giant Dines Phallic Brainstem Robotics Team from Baden, Pennsylvania. So before I go and talk about BSTEM, I just wanted to look at the chat. It looks like our <laughs> poll says that uh, no, gluten-free will not be able to do six plus stones in auto. Very interesting. I'm not sure how many people oh, voted on that. But that's a very interesting take. Um, so Brainstem competed at the Mahoning Valley Qualifier this past weekend and was the winning alliance captain and took home the second place Inspire Award. Sporting their all black like they usually have, Brainstem chose to use a Mechanum drivetrain this year paired with a compliant wheel intake like we have seen with many other teams. 
Uh, their stone delivery method used an arm uses an arm that swings out from the inside of the robot to place stones onto the foundations. And something that's unique about their arm that delivers the caps the stone is that it uh, can rotate side to side to orient the stones in any way they want. I know so that's something. Is, that... And uh, I. This is also <laughs> one of the first times that this match has actually been shown online. So uh, we were. It was awesome that we were able to be able to pull up this match. This was them scoring 128 points with their sister team, uh, the Substantial wow. Monocephalic Brainstorm Robotics team. And I think that you can see how their strategies differ from what many people would expect. Uh, they're building two towers with their sister team instead of one, and that allows them to easier double cap it. Um, one thing is with the two towers, and like one thing I'm worried about, like with the viability of them, is that when you have two towers, you lose uh, two points per level automatically, as one of them won't be the highest tower. And so, like, I think that's a real detriment to teams. But I suppose three points per level is a pretty, uh, pretty big bonus. Interesting. All right. In the seventh spot, we have Team Sixty Nine Twenty Nine. That's Data Force from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Data Force's robot this year is just a work of art. They have a turret on the robot, a turret. It's quite effective and efficient, as they don't need to turn their robot around in order to score stones into the foundation. They have an extrusion lift connected to a claw-like mechanism to place their stones onto the platform. And they also have a mechanism on their claw that allows them to rotate the stones any way they want to. This is a similar mechanism that we just saw with Brainstem. And uh, one thing that brains, uh, that Data Force has had similar to Technova is they use their claw for uh, autonomous instead of an intake like do you guys think this is something we'll be seeing uh, from a lot of teams this year i know i'm not comp i think data force just uses their main claw but i know technova specifically only has an autonomous claw like what do you guys think about that it's definitely the meta i'm just in awe by a turret you gotta look at this <laughs> i just want to see this for a minute <laughs> this is uh, 254 vibes from, was it this past year or two years no, ago? No, this past year. This past year? Past year, past year. That's yeah. just crazy to think about that they built a turret onto a small uh, frame factor like that. Um, it's super efficient, yeah. as you can tell. I mean, you could somewhat uh, get the same um, effect with swerve drive or maybe mechanic drive, but it's a much easier and more reliable way of doing that. Well, I don't know, easier, but much more reliable way of doing that. Do you think <laughs> I mean, we're I mean, I know last year... Turrets? Uh, I I doubt it. I mean, it's it's definitely a very difficult system to implement, and I doubt like many teams will be able to do it as effectively as Data Force has. And like I know last year, Data Force did win uh, either the the Design or Innovate Award at the Houston Championship. I'm pretty sure Design. And like I mean, I'm not surprised with dis like with uh, implementations like this, they definitely do deserve to win those type of awards. Yeah, yeah, and definitely. in this match, they hit 136 points, which is the world record currently. And they also mm -hmm. dropped a stone. Like, they <laughs> missed a stone, and they still scored 136 <laughs> points, which is just showing you how dominant they are. Uh, right. You can totally see them making a long run at championship. And with a good feeder bot, like, I don't think anybody could beat them. <laughs> I mean, it should be, like, it's really important to understand how 60 points in their auto contributed to that score. Yeah. I mean, like, that's 12 points more than, like, the other highest autos we've seen, just single-team autos. And, like, I mean, that is what decided the world record. So, I mean, I just think it's a fantastic implementation of odometry and their auto in general. I mean, I think just speaking generally, as we've seen from the last couple games, auto is king. You're going to win and lose in auto. Teleop is just what makes sure that you don't lose um, in right. the end. Yeah. So, really, you got to. You have to have an auto. If you don't have it, you lose. Auto can only let you win, but it can't win matches for you. Yeah, I think I think we've said this before. Auto, auto won't get you to the finals. Teleop will, but auto will win you the finals. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, in the sixth spot, we have Team 7236. And that's Recharged Green from Pell, Iowa. So, unfortunately, we could not find any match footage of Recharged Green, so they did release this teaser video, and um, <laughs> take it for what it is. <laughs> um, they have competed at uh, a couple of Iowa League meets. I think they've competed at five of them. And they've been a strong performer being 22-3 and three, um, <laughs> in all of their matches. They have an OPR of 67.2, and they're stacking around six stones high uh, just from the data that we've seen on them. Um, 
yeah, that's all I can say about <laughs> Recharge Screen. I haven't seen their robot. Did, um, they, did they build that uh, chair? Correct me he... if I'm wrong, but GM1 or GM2 says no uh, animal fluids are allowed on a robot. So <laughs> as far as I can tell, that robot isn't legal, but, you know, rules can change. So That's kind of, he's not <laughs> wearing we'll safety glasses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's just a tad bigger than 18 by 18 by 18. Just a tad. <laughs> Yeah, I think Ethan just built that at Google to HQ and just brought it in. <laughs> kind of looked like it. Oh. All right, All moving, right. On, moving on to our fifth spot, we have Team 12808. That's Revamped Robotics from Portland, Oregon. So Revamped has had a great season already, and they even had the time to put out a reveal video of their robot, which I'm pretty impressed by. Uh, they were the Winning Alliance captain and the Inspire Award winner at the Portland Metro BB-8 qualifying tournament. They have a mechanum wheel drive with a compliant wheel intake. They also use a double extrusion intake lift with a claw on it to grab stones. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, Revamped, along with their sister team, Recharge, has always had a really strong showing at Worlds, and I'm sure, like, they'll be no different this year. So hopefully we see some really high scores from them. Uh, on to the fourth spot. Here we have Team 8802. That's negative resistance from Bellevue, Washington. Negative resistance has just been on fire this season. Uh, they were one of the first teams to share their robot online with a three stone auto. And now they've got this really, really cool uh, stone stacking auto, which will set them up super well for Teleop. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think a uh, normal four, uh, four stone auto will score 60 points. And uh, right now, 8802's auto is scoring them 69 points if they do, um, if it does work uh, during matches, which I'm sure it will. And uh, in Teleop, uh, they're, they're doing just as well, scoring towers of 8 to 10 stones high. And they're consistently hitting 90 to 100 points. And with a good partner, I, def I don't doubt at all that they will set some world records. Right, like with the with the three high tower already built in right. auto, that gives you that much more time to build a tower during teleop, and so I can totally see them easily hitting ten because seven cycles is becoming commonplace among these top teams. So hitting mm -hmm. ten to twelve stones every single match, um, that three high tower is just setting you up for perfection. Yeah, and uh, another thing that's really important that I think is a great benefit of these uh, already stacked towers is that there's no question about where your drivers will start stacking. You know, like when you see like uh, four stone placing autos from like teams like Technova and Data Force, sometimes there's like a little communication issue of like, do we stack on this stone or this stone? Like, where do we start? And I think that can lose time and cycles, but like with uh, 8802, like, you will always, always be stacking on top of that three stack, and there's no question of it. So you'll just start right off the bat going super high. It yep. just sets them up for success for the rest of the match, which is the perfect mm -hmm. thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yep. All right, in the third spot, we've got Team 7357. And that's Team Tech Titanium from Leeds Summit, Missouri. 7357 has had a great season so far, starting out by winning the Inspire Award and being the winning alliance captain at the Nom Master Nom Noster uh, qualifying tournament. They have the highest OPR in the world right now at 0.9. They have a beautiful robot using a finish color, and they also use a scissor lift and claw to pick up the stone, similar to what we saw from Aperture Science. Their claw can shift side to side, which allows them to easily stack onto the skyscrapers and not have to move their drivetrain while their lift is extended up. It's just a beautiful robot. Yeah. I want to wait. Uh, Tyler, can you skip a little bit ahead into this video? Uh, possibly. Yeah, as you can see, kind of... Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. That's good. Um, like, I mean, you can see how effective they are. They're just a quick driving team. Uh, they're also the uh, they're the FTC team of Team Titanium from FRC, which yeah. has also been a powerhouse. Um, they, they build awesome robots. One of the things that uh, 1986 yeah. Team Titanium is known for uh, is their mechanic wheels uh, for an FRC. So Coming into number two, we have te my team, 3101. That is the Boombots from Florida. 
All right, the Boombots this year have had quite an impressive showing, and we're definitely looking to defend our world champion title. Right now, we have the high, third highest OPR in the world, and we're the first to do an 11th stack. Much like other teams, uh, we feature a compliant wheel intake and really fast lift system in order to stack efficiently during our matches. Right now, we hold the top five scores in Florida, and hopefully we'll be seeing some more high scores from us this next meet. Yeah, and like just to see how fast your cycle times were with being fed, and really your strategy with being fed, you told your partner to put the stones outside of the building zone, which is something that I found interesting. It helps keep yeah. them out of your way. Um, your cycle times are insane, like three seconds, four seconds, five seconds for uh, each stone that you put on there. Um, like, I can see that totally being one of the winning designs here. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to our partner team. There's one of our sister teams, 506 Pandara. I mean, this record would not have happened without them. So, I mean, feeder bots, like you guys definitely are important and you will be the ones deciding who wins matches. So like, don't forget about that. Definitely, yeah. Um, so let's, are we ready to hop into our number one spot? Let's and do so it. rounding out our top 25, we have team 10435. They are the Circuit Breakers from Waukee, Iowa. The Circuit Breakers have a beautiful robot. Uh, they have gone a perfect 24-0 so far in Iowa League meets. They haven't reached the qualifier stage yet, but I think they will this weekend or next. Uh, they have a Mechanum drive and use compliant wheels uh, to intake their stones. They have an extrusion lift connected to their claw to place stones under the foundation. A very simple yet super effective robot. And congratulations again to them on the number one spot in this month's top 25. I think uh, the most surprising thing was how early they were able to do their bot. Their bot was done in oh, yeah. November. Mm -hmm. And I remember going online and seeing that record that they got. I think it was 111 points <laughs> in November. Yeah. And I'm like, really? Yeah. Like, how are we supposed to compete with that? Um, it's been pretty insane. They they really got out early. I know last year, uh, both Gluten Free and 3101 only lost three matches uh, up until Houston and Detroit Worlds, uh, respectively. Uh, I think Circuit Breakers, they're going for that record. Do you guys know if any FTC team has gone undefeated ever? Throughout the whole season? Yeah, throughout I, the whole season. I doubt. Uh, not that I know okay. of. I don't know mm -hmm. of any. Mm -hmm. I know last year at Houston Worlds with FRC, there was this like huge thing. Like even the game announcers talked about it uh, on Da Vinci Field with like cheesy poofs being this close to going undefeated the whole season. It was either this year or last year, but I'm 2018. Mean, they went undefeated. Okay, 2018. 53 yeah. and 0. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I'm just waiting for some FTC team to do that. So I mean, I think Circuit Breakers they're definitely on track to do it. We'll see how they do at uh, state champs and probably world champs. So anything else you want to share about Ishan and Abbas? Yeah. I, uh, one thing that right now is in the works is we actually might be getting them on the show. So uh, let us know who you'd like to see on the show for our next FTC live uh, show, and we're going to try to get. The circuit breakers on uh for the next show that we're gonna have in two weeks so uh, one question i wanted to ask you guys before we uh end for the night is how high do you think we'll see teams go like these top 25 teams how high do you think we'll see them go by houston and detroit champs so my first question is because i've forgotten is how tall was a stone a four inches uh, tall. Five, four to five inches depending on yeah uh, I think we'll probably see at most 14. 14 to 15 is what I had. Yeah, I think my prediction is uh, 15 to 18, but I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I think uh, once you get past, um, once you get past like six feet tall, that's gonna be pretty insane. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, let's uh, go ahead and wrap up. Yeah, so uh, thank you all for the follows and subscriptions we've received today. Don't forget that you can subscribe for free if you or your parents of Amazon Prime. We hope you enjoyed this episode of FTC Recap. If you want to stay connected with what Fun FTC is doing, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Fun FTC, and make sure to join our Discord through the link in the chat. Tyler, can you read off who has pledged their support on this stream? 
Uh, yeah, I know we're missing a few for some reason because we definitely got more in our metrics and what showed up on my screen. So I'm not sure if you guys, if, if you are subscribing or resubscribing, hit that in chat so we can see you on there as well too. But uh, Elon9421 uh, with the Prime sub. Once again, I probably messed up his name as always. Uh, our Annihilation with the Prime sub. Sammy Bog Prime sub. Uh, Triple Charge FTC, eight months of support. Redfish Robotics with 10 months of support uh, and some bits as well too. Michael CC9889, three months of support. And Eric8417 with seven months of support. Helping fun state law live and independent guys thank you so much for your support and like nathan said go check our discord we have over 2200 people in our discord now at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and of course all the great uh social media areas you can find both first updates now and fun ftc all right on behalf of myself nathan ishan and our producer tyler working behind the scenes i would like to thank you all for tuning in tonight we will be opening the february top 25 voting poll in a week or so and in two weeks we will have an F episode of ftc live where we will have an in where we will be doing a team interview probably with uh team circuit breakers among a couple other things see you then and good night bye thanks for watching if you want more fun content be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos you can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.